Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure and the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed adventure, two criminals are holding Tonga in the subcellar of a Venus skyscraper. As Buzz and Happy advance toward the men, they pass a large ventilating tunnel covered with a metal screen. One of the men throws a switch, and behind the screen, the blades of a giant fan start to whirl. They've turned the ventilator fan on. Rush them, Happy. Yes, sir. I can't stay on my feet. Keep away from the grating. I, I can't move. The air sucks and pull me against the grating. It's got me too. Try to pull loose, Happy. The wind's too strong. Commander, the grating is sliding up. Pull, Happy. Pull hard. If you don't get out of this tunnel, we'll be pulled into the fan. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, a top secret D-ray. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, gang, here's something I'll bet you just never dreamed you could own. I mean a pair of those amazing new Space Patrol space binoculars. A pair just like the commander uses himself. Now, you know how he can look way off in the distance with his space binoculars? Well, kids, you can do the same with yours. You can read signs blocks and blocks away, watch far-off traffic, study birds in high trees, and do lots and lots of other things with your space binoculars all year long. Now, these are not flimsy goggles or a mask. These are great big plastic space binoculars that stand out from your eyes a full three and a half inches. Why, you don't even have to use your hands when you're looking through space binoculars. They have a strong elastic band that holds them snugly to your eyes. It's swell for playing space patrol because then your hands are free to drive your rocket ship or to hold your cosmic smoke gun. Now, remember, these are real fixed focus four power binoculars with four pure Lucite lenses. Real binoculars, five inches long, five inches wide, the greatest offer we've ever made on Space Patrol. But, gang, the offer soon ends, so don't miss out. Send for your Space Binoculars today. Just buy a box of Instant Ralston. Then, with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and an Instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686. St. Louis, Missouri. If you don't agree that your binoculars are tops, send them back and we'll return your money. That's Space Patrol, Box 686. St. Louis, Missouri. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have just blasted off from Terra and have set their vector for the lunar fleet base on the Earth's moon. One of the busiest spaceports in the solar system, the fleet base is also the center of scientific research into the development of space flight. For the past week, it's been open house at the base, with guided tours for throngs of visitors from Earth and many of the other planets. Tonga has been assigned to special duty at the base to see that security regulations are observed. Buzz and Happy plan to spend two days at this moon spaceport and then bring Tonga back to China. Mind if I tell you something, sir? What happened? Well, I didn't say anything one way or the other, but... Well, I'm certainly glad I wasn't assigned to duty at the fleet base this week. Somehow I get the impression that you don't exactly care for the idea of herding tourists around. Oh, it might have been fun for a couple of days, but gee, a whole week. Why, I'd rather fly through the meteor belt than a birdcage. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. Just the same, Visitor's Week at the Lunar Base has been fine for public relations. You'd be surprised at the number of people who are on the moon this week who've never made a space flight before. Tonga, Lunar Fleet Base, calling Commander Corey aboard Terra 5. Tonga, calling Commander Corey aboard Terra 5. Corey here. Go ahead, Tonga. Commander, I have an emergency message. I'm cutting to scramble circuit code 5. All right, Tonga. I'll adjust the receiver. Code 5 circuit cut in. Go ahead. There has been a security leak on the D-ray project here at the base. The D-ray project? Yes, Commander. A strip of microfilm containing the basic designs has been taken from the files. Do you have any idea when the theft occurred? Within the last three days. Order the base commander to declare condition red and ground all spaceships. The thief may still be on the base. Condition red is already in effect, Commander. Colonel Jacobson issued the order 20 minutes ago. Good. That film must not be smuggled off the base. Tonga, cut on your tape recorder and take this message. Feed it through the public address system at the spaceport every 10 minutes. Ready, Commander. Now here's the message. 
Attention everyone, base personnel and visitors. No film of any kind is to be taken from the base until checked by security officers. Film that is cleared will be sealed and returned to passengers after they're permitted to board their ships. Film not surrendered to security officers will be automatically blanked out by cancel ray machines as passengers and luggage pass through the gates. To preserve your personal films, follow these regulations. End of message. I haven't recorded, Commander. It will be put on the base PA system immediately. We don't want to keep innocent people on the base longer than necessary, so run the films through inspection as rapidly as full security methods permit. Yes, Commander. Happy and I will arrive at Lunar Fleet Base in approximately three hours. We'll contact you upon arrival. Corey, out. Commander, what is this D-ray project? Well, the D-ray is a new defense ray. It can make any unfriendly spaceship completely powerless, even at great distances. It neutralizes all electrical fields. Yeah, yeah, it would cut off all controls so you couldn't maneuver the ship or fire weapons. You couldn't even use the spacer phone or view scope. And those are the plans that have been stolen? Yes, and that means that somebody could build a D-ray to use against space patrol ships if they got away. That's why we have to get that microfilm back. Smoking rockets. I want to spacer phone Major Robertson and have him transmit the pictures and records of everyone suspected of espionage to the Lunar Fleet Base. Take over the controls, Happy. Yes, sir. And keep it on vector. Yes, sir. Your film has been cleared, sir. It will be returned to you aboard your ship as soon as transportation is available. Next. Your name, please? Bob Morgan. You have some film to declare? Yes, ma'am. It's in this can. It's a home movie of my family and some friends. Only a couple of shots of the fleet base. The guide said it was okay to take them. I'll have to run them off, Mr. Morgan. If you'll step into the projection room with me. Sure. You'll probably find them pretty dull. I'm not much good at taking them. Now, this is about the last of the shots I made on Venus. That's my wife and our youngest daughter, Susie. Oh, what a cute little girl. Thank you. Oh? Uh, is this what you filmed here in the base? Yeah. Oh. Yes, that's rocket shoot number one. I'd have got a ship blasting off, but they didn't have the camera aim right. Well, that's the end of the wheel. I guess you're glad that's over. Unless you know the people involved, whole movies are pretty dull, usually. Well, I'm sure you and your family will enjoy these when you get back to, uh... Uh, Mars, isn't it, Mr. Morgan? Yeah. Films are all right, then? Oh, perfectly. I'll give you a clearance check, and they'll be returned to you aboard the Mars Express. Uh, thanks, miss. Hope you find what you're looking for. Ladies and gentlemen, please. We're checking your films as rapidly as we can. Just wait your turn and, and be patient, please. Now, who's next? Is the crowd giving you much trouble, Tonga? Oh, Commander... Oh, no, I haven't had any trouble, but the people have had their holiday and they're impatient to get home. The thief or thieves must have planned to take the microfilms when we had thousands of visitors on our hands. Can we go somewhere where we can talk? Well, we can use the room next to the projection room. Fine, let's go. Happy will be with us in a few minutes. I have him waiting for some pictures and data Robbie's sending us by viewscope facsimile. In here, Commander. Any trace of microfilm, Tonga? No. The only microfilm any of the security officers have found is of a regular business record nature. Any indication of blow-ups of microfilm to regular amateur size? None. Oh, what a mob. I thought I'd never get through. Cadet, how much longer do I have to wait? Cadet, why is the Space Patrol interested in pictures of my daughter's wedding? Oh. <laughs> That's understandable, Happy. Got the pictures? Oh, yes, sir. Quite a batch of them. And the uh, background data as well. Look through these, Tonga. See if you can recognize any of these people as having been here at the fleet base. All right, Commander. <sighs> Anything on the D-ray films, Commander? Mm, not yet, Happy. Commander, this man looks familiar. I think I've seen him here. Which one? Uh, this one. He had some amateur movies of his family. A reel he'd taken on Venus. Uh, Morgan is his name. Bob Morgan. Very interesting. According to the record, Morgan was picked up on Mars last week. He was suspected of violating security regulations there, released for lack of evidence. Well, there was nothing wrong with his film. Just his wife and daughter Susie and, well, a couple of harmless shots of the base. Yes, but look at this. Morgan was also questioned on Venus with a certain Art Robertson, also released for lack of evidence. Say, Morgan doesn't have any children. In fact, he isn't married. What? Now, why would a man lie about a perfectly harmless amateur film? 
Tonga, have you got someone who can take over your duties here? Dr. Thornton has been working with me. He will assume your duties. You're to blast off for Venus City and try to get a line on Morgan's friend, Art Robertson. Happy and I'll head from Mars to check on Mr. Morgan. As soon as you have any information, relay it to me through Space Patrol Unit Headquarters. And... Can't you speed up that projector, Morgan? I'm tired of looking at these phony home movies. You're tired of them. I've seen this film a dozen times while I was editing and doctoring it at the fleet base. And I had a look at it again at security. Okay, I'll speed it up. Well, the place where I dubbed in the documents is coming up shortly. You must have done a good job with the assistant security, Chief Passett. It's lucky I took all that trouble out. Even though we thought we could get off the fleet base before anyone discovered the D-ray plans were gone, it didn't work out that way. Now, what happened? Well, some eager beaver engineer started his ship three hours early. Now, we're getting close. Watch this, I... There. I've stopped the film on the frame of the little girl. You don't see anything unusual? No. Needs did security. Watch now. I'll switch to the microfilm lens on the projector. Mm, all I see is a plain white space with a blue border. Now, that's a blow-up of one of the white checks on the girl's skirt. Blue border is made by the adjoining blue squares. You mean one tiny square fills the whole screen? Mm, I still don't see anything. You will. When I cut off the regular lamp and turn on the infrared... Jump on Jupiter, the D-ray plans. Right. That's page one. Next 20 frames, there are other pages concealed in squares of the girl's skirt. Great job, Morgan. Terrific. Yeah. Nearly went nuts. First, I had to project the original microfilm, photograph it in infrared on another microfilm. Then came the tough part. I had to superimpose the plans on a regular-sized film inside one of those tiny squares. You did a great job, Art, and take the D-ray strip to Venus. Now, will we collect? Yeah. But it'll take me a couple of days to establish contact with the man who pays off. Naturally. Four minutes out of Lowell City, sir. Take over for the landing, Happy. Tonga, Phoenix City, Space Patrol Headquarters, calling Commander Corey of Bortero 5. Tonga, calling Commander Corey. Corey here, go ahead. I've been checking an Art Robinson, Commander. Got the word earlier than I thought I would. Well, let's have it. He left here for Lowell City about five days ago. Then there's a good chance he came to Mars to meet Morgan. One of our agents at Lowell City has found Morgan's location. Stay in Venus City, Tonga. Find out who Robertson's friends are. See if you can run down any definite contacts or connections between Robertson and Morgan. Yes, Commander. Happy and I'll handle things at the Lowell City end. Hurry out. Yeah? Mr. Robert Morgan? Oh, why, yes. I'm Commander Corey of the Space Patrol. This is Cadet Happy. We'd like to talk to you. Uh, sure. Come in, gentlemen. After you, sir. Mr. Morgan, you brought back some film from the Lunar Fleet Base, I believe. Yeah, that's right. I have the clearance certificate from your security officer. Like to see it? We'd like to see the film. We want to examine it again. Uh, sure. I have it right here on the table. Thank you. Here, Happy. Take care of this. Yes, sir. Anything wrong, Commander? I mean, with the film? I hope not. Oh, by the way, is your wife home? My wife. Oh, she's uh, visiting her sister in Jupiter City. I see. And your daughter Sally is with her, I suppose. Yeah, and Sally's with her. Mr. Morgan, unless I'm mistaken, when our security officer was running the film at the base, you told her your daughter's name was Susie. Why, we uh, call her Sally as a sort of a nickname. In our files, Mr. Morgan, you're listed as being single. Well, uh, I'll tell you. Uh, actually, that film belongs to a friend of mine. I thought I could get it through inspection quicker if I acted as though it were mine. I realize now it was foolish and unnecessary. We'll give the reel a very thorough examination at the security lab. You'll hear from us then. Fine, Commander. Say, that's a pretty fancy projector. I'm just noticing that happen. An expensive professional model, isn't it? Uh, yes, a uh, hobby of mine. It's got a lot of extra gadgets on it, too. And they seem to be similar to those in the security lab. Mm-hmm. A parrot with several different lenses, including one for microfilm and with an infrared attachment. Hey, we could run it off right here. Morgan, Get him, you? Robertson. It's a space patrol. Hey, look out, Commander. <coughs> Commander. You warned him too late, Cadet. Oh. Well, just in time. Get the film. What do we do with Corey and the Cadet? We've got to get him out of here. We'll have to take him to Venus with us. Maybe on the way we'll finish him off without leaving a clue. Mr. 
We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. But in the meantime, here's a quick three-act play. Act one begins with the boy and his mother in a house in a kitchen in the morning. Fill her up, Mom. Rice checks. Now there's a boy who knows what he's talking about. He wants a bowl of delicious rice checks for breakfast. Rice checks, the shredded rice super cereal, spun in that modern bite-sized design. Act two, next morning, same house, same boy. And in the kitchen, he's lifting up that bowl again. Fill her up, Mom. Wheat checks. Yep, today he wants wheat checks. Power packed wheat checks. Swell tasting shredded wheat biscuits in that same modern bite sized design. Third act, third day. Same kitchen, same boy. Fill her up, Mom. Instant Ralston. Yes, sir. Today he wants to warm up his motor, so for him it's Instant Ralston. The cereal with flavor galore. Good hot Ralston. And so ends our play. And gang, here's the moral. For a super breakfast, eat a super cereal. Rice checks. Wheat checks. Good hot Ralston. Bob Morgan has stolen a set of microfilm plans for the secret D-ray from the Lunar Fleet Base by superimposing them on an innocent-appearing film of regular size. Buzz and Happy, suspicious of Morgan because of discrepancies in his story, found the film containing the defense secret. But before they could examine it, Morgan's accomplice, Art Robertson, arrived, and the two men overpowered the space patrolman in a fight in a darkened room. Right now, with Buzz and Happy locked in a compartment, Morgan and Robertson are in a spaceship approaching Venus. We aren't going to land in Venus City with Corey and the cadet aboard, are we? No. Now, we'll set the ship down at my place on the Turquoise River and get rid of the men. Get the ozone cylinder, hook it up. We'll turn it on just after we land. And leave Corey's compartment unlocked. I'll land the ship. Commander, they've landed. I wonder where we are. Listen. They're out in the corner by the door. Watch your chance. If they open it, we'll jump them. Yes, sir. Leave them in there, Morgan. We'll attend to them when we come back. Okay. Sounds like they're leaving the ship for something. Yeah. Did you hear a click just then? I don't think so, sir. I think one of them was about to open the door when the other one called him away. Try the handle. Thanks, sir. It's unlocked. Open the door a little. Listen. Hear anything? I thought I heard the hatch close. Let's get out of here. Happy. Look out the viewport. There they are. Yeah. Heading for that little building. It looks at the landscape. It must be on Venus. And if I'm not mistaken, there's the Turquoise River. It sure looks like it. I wonder what they're up to. We've got our weapons. Well, we could rush them. Yeah, well, maybe we could take them by surprise when they come back. Those D-ray plans at stake. I don't want to risk failure. We'll blast off in their ship and space upon to Venus City for help. It's a great idea, sir. They can't get very far away, even if they do try to escape. We can watch them from the air. Come on, let's get to the cockpit. Well, this, this is really a break. Well, we needed one. I have an idea that Morgan and Robertson were ready to see that we didn't get out of this. There. All secured for blast off, sir. And let's go. <laughs> There they go. Yeah, just the way you planned it. How long will it take for that ozone to take effect? Ah, oh, just a couple of minutes. After a few lungfuls of that contaminated oxygen, they get sick and dizzy. Before they can land, they'll black out. <laughs> and there'll be a terrible tragedy on the Space Patrol records. <laughs> Where's this submarine? Uh, it's hidden under the wharf on the river. Come on, let's get down to it. We'll maintain this altitude, Happy, and keep circling over them. I can see them in the view scope, sir. They're heading for the river. Do you see any boat they could escape in? I, uh... uh What's the matter, Happy? Oh, nothing, sir. My eyes blurred for a minute, that's all. Uh, no. No, there's no boat near the wharf. I'll put that space phone call through now. Commander Corey aboard private cruiser VP-784, calling Space Patrol Venus City. Commander Corey aboard private cruiser V. What was that number, Hank? Huh? 
It's on the panel, sir. Oh, smoking rockets. I can hardly see. Commander Corey calling Space Patrol Venus City. Commander, the controls. Oh, thanks, sir. Yeah. I feel sick. Something's wrong with the air in this ship. Happy, quickly. See if you can find a couple of spacesuits. Yes, sir. Hurry. Hard to get on. I feel so weak. I'll help you, Happy. There. Now close the face piece. Let's, let's hope the oxygen supply works. Is your suit receiver working, Happy? Yes, sir. I read you. Take several deep breaths. It's clearing all right. So is mine. Now check the view scope. Did you see Morgan and Robertson? No, sir. Last I saw of them, they were headed for the wharf. Do you suppose they're swimming across the river? So keep watching, Happy. I'll check the air analyzer and see what's wrong. Of course, they might have gone back to the building while we were putting on our suits. Boy, I sure thought I was going out there for a while. No wonder. The ship's air indicator's in the red. A few more breaths and we'd have been finished. Hey, there is a boat down there. It's coming out from under the wharf. It's an odd-looking craft. Hey, now it's gone. It, it sank. Submerged is more accurate. A miniature sub. Right. The three we fell into a trap. They wanted us to blast off in the ship. Have me check the air system to see what they rigged up. I'll notify Venus River Patrol to take soundings up and down the river for that sub. Where are we now? Right where we want to be. Pier 7, Venus City Dock Area. Eight fathoms deep. Safe to surface here? Sure. We come up under Pier 7. There's a ladder that leads up through a trap door into a tool shed. A few minutes from now, we'll be in the streets of Venus City, ready to sell the D-ray plans. Yeah. No one able to trace it. I'll cut the motors now. We're going to the surface. We hit Venus City at just the right time. The streets are deserted. Yeah. Uh, turn left at this corner. We'll walk over to the business section and hail a surface taxi. <coughs> no. Sorry, lady. Why don't you look where you're going? Oh, I beg your pardon, but you came around the corner. Yeah, yeah, I, I pulled. We're sorry. Wait. Wait, you're Bob Morgan. We're in a hurry. Wait. You're under arrest, both of you. We're bumping into you. Don't be stupid. She's from the fleet base, a security officer. That's right. You have to come with me to headquarters. That's what you think. Let go of me. Put your hand over her mouth so she can't yell. Okay. Oh. Hold still, you. We can't ever spread the news we're in town. Uh, drag her into the alley. Leave her there? No, no. The new building my company is moving to is a block from here. There won't be anybody there this time of night. I'll guard her while you go get a surface car. Surface car? Yeah, so we can haul her to the river. Come on, I'll help you carry Where am I now? Told you before, you're in the basement of the Marcab Building, 4th Avenue and Venus Boulevard, Venus City. Ah, here's Morgan. Hey, what took you so long? I had trouble renting a car, but I got one. Come on, let's get her out of here. Okay, Tonga, here we go. All right, Morgan, Robertson. It's Corey and the cadet. Let's go, Tonga, and get your hands up. Quick, Morgan, down this corridor toward the ventilator intake. Take the girl. Corey won't dare shoot. Let's go. Come on. They're getting away, Commander. After them, Happy. Robertson, it's a dead end. Go to the firewall. We'll make a stand there. Come on, you. Commander. You haven't got a chance. That girl here, we can bargain with Corey. All right, press back into this corner, under the switch box. You might as well give up, you two. Come and get us. Come on, Happy. You're crazy. Left our ray guns in the sub. Or I'll have to pass in front of that big grating. When he does, I'll throw the switch. Well, that... There's an eight-foot ventilator fan back there. It'll create a vacuum strong enough to pull him right up against the grating. Commander! Help me! Don't come any closer! Shut up! Shut up! Morgan, pull the switch! Watch him, Happy! Yes, sir! Turn that off! Commander! Commander, I can't... I can't move! Come on and get us, Corey! Suction! Now, Corey, I'm going to release the grating. Happy, if you can slump down, maybe you can crawl away from the vent. Commander... The grating is sliding up. We'll be pulled back into the fan. I can still move my arm. I can throw my gun and hit that switch and short it out. Aim straight, Commander. Here it goes. You did it, sir. A bullseye. Be happy to rush them. They hit the switch. Morgan, pick up that ray gun. No, you don't. Get away from it, Morgan. All right, Robertson. No more. No more. I've had enough. How about you, Morgan? Uh, sorry, Commander, but Mr. Morgan is out. Yeah. Are you all right, Tom? Yes, Commander. I guess you heard my miniature space upon Yes, and Robertson's ship. Good thing you had it on. It was lucky Morgan had trouble locating a surface con. All right, Robertson. Where's that film strip? 
Right here. In my pocket. Hand it over. Happy to see if he can revive our fleet-based tourist, Morgan. Oh, he's not a tourist any longer. Where he's going, he'll be a permanent resident. <laughs> we'll be back with an action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story in just a moment. Hey, gang, have you sent for your Space Patrol space binoculars yet? Well, you better hurry, because this offer is soon going to end. Now, remember, space binoculars are real binoculars. Big, powerful binoculars you can see way off in the distance with. And when I say they're big, when I say they're powerful, I mean it. Space binoculars are five inches long, five inches wide. They're four power binoculars, and that means they make people, cars, buildings, everything else in the distance look four times closer. Now, they're not old-fashioned binoculars that you have to hold in your hand. They're sleek, new, modern plastic binoculars with an elastic band that holds them snugly to your eyes. Just think of the fun. You can spot planes in the sky, watch birds and squirrels in the trees, identify cars blocks away, read signs way off in the distance, and do lots and lots of other things with them day and night all year long. Absolutely the greatest value we've ever offered. But don't forget, this offer soon ends. So hurry, send for your official Space Patrol space binoculars today. Just buy a box of instant Ralston. Then, with your name and address... Send 25 cents in coin and an instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, an exciting preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story. Buzz and Happy have conceived an extremely daring and dangerous plan to surprise two criminals who are holding Carol captive in the Martian hills. Right now, they're nearing the hideout in a small atmosphere ship. We're getting close, sir. Fasten your safety belt, Happy. Here's where we would develop power failure intentionally. I'm all set, sir. Hang on. I'm about to make the worst landing of my career. The ground's coming up awfully fast. you got to make this look like a disastrous crash. Okay, but it's beginning to look too realistic. Grace yourself. It's beginning to look like a real thing to me, too. We're losing control. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, Crash Landing, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present... Space Patrol! Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Norman Jolly, Ken Mayer, Nina Barra, and Stephen Robertson. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when we check... Rice Checks and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol. Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. Space Patrol comes to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.